What would happen if you played Terraria, but you couldn't use any weapons other than the cursor from Cookie Clicker? Well, small spoiler, this happens. But before we get to that, I should name my character. A true hero doesn't just need a name, they need a title, something to be remembered by. So I named my character what all Cookie Clicker players are. Unemployed. First we have to cut down some wood. I can't attack enemies with any other weapons, so I need to get a clicker fast. Just do some extreme parkour spectacular. Extreme again. Chop some more wood and then I can craft the ultimate weapon. Wooden clicker. For damage. Let's test it out on a slime. <laughs> All I have to do is click and they die. This is the equivalent of just buying the starting cursor and cookie clicker. Slowly generates some starting cookies. Or in this case, slowly generates pain for the enemy. Wait. Do slimes have nervous systems? Do they feel pain? Is this animal cruelty or stealing jelly from the homeless? Either way, I don't feel bad. Then I played Terraria normally for a while, farmed wood for a bit and mined, before I found a chest which held... Lamp oil. Rope. Bombs. After mining through caves for a while, I came across an underground house with a keg of alcohol and no bed making me feel scarily at home. In the chest was a blizzard in the bottle, used for getting closer to enemies to click them. This represents the grandma in Cookie Clicker. Gives a slight buff to the power of the cursor, and like the blizzard, you'll also eventually put them in a bottle. <clears throat> I'm also taking the chandeliers here. The more shiny things I own, the more important I feel. Clicking might seem overpowered right now, but you can't just click anywhere in the circle and deal damage. You need a direct line of sight to do any damage to the enemies, so you can't just box yourself in and click away. Otherwise you could be so overpowered you could crazy stuff like it, n never mind that we'll get to that later i killed some more things by passing my hands over it softly closing their eyes telling them to sleep forever then i got bored of mining properly and instead resorted to bombs and then that got boring so i took the fastest route possible back to the surface respawning is the fastest form of transport when i returned it was night i need a stronger weapon to defeat the monsters of the dark and finally it's time i crafted the ultimate weapon the tin clicker Four, four damage still. Okay, it's the same as the wooden. Uh, then it's time I created the ultimate weapon, the lead clicker. Five damage. Finally, I can destroy my enemies. Wait, I've got a bad reforge. It's still only four damage. Damn it! Although, it does have a secret ability. Cookie Clicker has an upgrade called Reinforced Index Finger. The mouse and the cursors are twice as efficient, and the lead clicker does double damage every ten clicks. After all this clicking, my index finger is actually getting stronger too. I don't know if you can build biceps on your finger, but I think I'm getting close. The night is over, and I have a comfy home. Well, I think my house is about complete. Nice and cozy. Doesn't really get better than this. I wonder if I can use windows to attack people, because if range is based off line of sight, hmm, I'm pretty sure human eyes can see through glass, been a while since I've been one though. And the new extension to my house has been made, complete with windows. Nope, it doesn't work. Stupid humans are weak as- Oh wait, at least the new cursor has a longer range. I can reach enemies from further away. Just like how in Cookie Clicker, you gain more milk for every achievement. Like buy 10 grandmas, 2 mils of milk, click a thousand times, 5 mils of milk, accidentally eat your own cat thinking it's a cookie. 50 gallons of milk! Alright, now that I have a clicker with negative 20% damage and no armor at all, I think I'm ready for boss fights. First though, I made a quick trip to the desert to get a magic mirror. Now I don't have to blow myself up to get home, and I stole more chandeliers to make myself feel fancy. I did have some complaints in the past about my houses not being aesthetically pleasing, so I'll make this one real good. There we go. Four chandeliers. What else could you possibly want? Alright, my platform is ready for the first boss fight, and the Blood Moon is rising. Luckily they were weak against my lead clicker's heavy metal poisoning, and I said I wouldn't use any other weapons, but I can still use verbal abuse. Undead, more like left on red. Eyeball that's flying, more like round earth denying. And after all that, they dropped a new clicker weapon for me, the Hemo Clicker, which is named after hemoglobin, or blood, so I can now control blood, but I have too many crossovers already in this video, so forget that. It's finally time for the boss fight, Eye of Cthulhu versus Clickers, clicking length versus cornea strength, Grandma Lorelei versus big fat ugly eye, Eye of Cthulhu versus one finger kung fu, gruesome retina versus, oh wait, I already won. Guess I won't do another rhyming pun. After clicking over 200 times on an eyeball, I have Crimtain Ore. And now that I've beaten the boss, I can craft the ultimate weapon! Sinister Clicker. I harness the power of evil into a cursor. This represents the grandmas taking over the world. The clickpocalypse is upon us. Hmm, while I still have no armor, house, or a plan, I'm just gonna go fight the next boss. The thing is, I might not be great at Terraria, but I'm a clicker game pro. I know the crumble or dragon frenzy 
strategy. I've baked golden cookies in real life. I've lost jobs over this game. I once bought a second phone so I could play Clicker Heroes twice at once. That last one is actually true. I think I played Clash of Clans on two phones at once as well. Jeez, at least that embarrassing part of my life is over. Now I'm a gaming YouTuber. The point is, I know what I'm getting into. I can click. I also bought some soda from a merchant which helps my clicks deal more damage. This made me realize I haven't drunk any water while playing this game. Or in the game. Oh well, next boss. Time to fight the biggest brain in existence, belonging to the smartest person of all time, Matt Damon. I won and got some blood tissue for my effort, and since this is before any sort of hospitals or clinics, you know I have every disease imaginable. I don't have long left to finish this run before unemployed dies of imploding heart disease. I can finally make my first armor. It gives me a bunch of defense and raises my clicker's damage from 10 to 11, making it the ultimate And instead of preparing, I'm going straight to Skeletron. Useful Terraria tip, the dungeon will always spawn on the opposite side of the world as the jungle biome. Useful real life tip, don't trust Trevor. He stole my scooter in year four. And now we fight the origin of the term Big Boned. A man turns into a giant skeleton monster and I click on it like I'm accepting terms and conditions that I haven't read. A bountiful harvest of calcium was gifted to the soil that night. Time to enter the dungeon. Once in, I got a brand new clicker, dealing 14 damage every click, making this the average weapon. I mean, it's all right. And now we do our best Mario impersonation and rescue the princess from a castle. She's carrying around hand cream because she can't bear to touch poor people. So I steal it and it has the hidden effect of auto click. Finally, I don't have to click anymore. My index finger has doubled in size and all the iron from my bloodstream has funneled directly into it, making my finger complete metal. But now I can have a break. Oh, the auto click is five times slower than me clicking. All right, back to destroying my mouse. I went on to do my best impersonation of a side movie character charging right into a pitch black room with no regard for my own safety. Surprisingly, it turned out well and I got a cobalt shield. But most importantly, the interior design here is amazing. I'm gonna take some inspiration from it to make my house look stylish, comfortable, and aesthetic. I took the furniture. Does it look good yet? While I was in the dungeon, the merchant finally arrived. He sells cookie. Every so often a cookie will spawn on your screen and if you click it in time, your radius will grow so you can click further away to attack. Now that's actually really good and overpowered if I can use it well. I can kill all the butterflies around me. <laughs> well actually, he also sells a bug net. I can catch the creatures. I can keep them safe. What a wonderful game, frolicking through the fields, getting butterflies. Uh, are you a butterfly? Close enough, right? Here is my butterfly display. I have the three great butterflies of the animal kingdom and the big fat one. Merchant, thank you so much for opening my eye. Wait, you'll buy them? Okay, butterflies, time to get shipped off to a factory and become glue. Get back here. Dragoon needs money for a new chandelier. I got so distracted making butterflies extinct, I didn't realize it was raining slime. King Slime came and fought me, but it was so easy, I can't be bothered showing the fight. I'm clicking so fast right now that it died upon spawning. My finger has a bicep for each joint. Which means the next boss I'm up to, if you skip all of these, is the Wall of Flesh almost at hard mode. The problem is, the wall of flesh is in hell and I haven't built a tunnel to hell yet. I could use this copper pickaxe to mine down, but that would take approximately the same time as the heat death of the universe, or longer, when the final Game of Thrones book is published. That's why I have an alternative strategy called Blowing things up is just easier. The only problem is, I don't have a demolitionist. I don't see why he doesn't want to move in. We have an apartment building where every room is exactly the same, right next to my glorious aesthetic mansion. Maybe I can make an adjustment to the renting advertisement. Hmm, okay, I'm just gonna add something to it. And he arrived. Also, I misclicked a bomb and accidentally blew up the penguin enclosure. And then his brother walked past. All right, now I have over 200 bombs from the demolitionist ready to mine. Oh no, I misclicked. Wait, no, not again. Staying away from my house until I'm out of bombs. Mining time. Finally, the underworld. I explored for a minute getting some hellfire arrows and then I did my best impersonation of a f***ing idiot by jumping into a spa left on heat overnight. Back at the house, I'm ready to use the temple upgrade of Cookie Clicker. By praying to the Australian spider gods, I can craft a glove made of silk, which automatically clicks for me once every three seconds. Let's see the wrath of my brand new item. So it should click, eventually. Hey, 10 damage every three seconds. I don't have time for anything better. I have every disease. Time to go down the elevator. Oh wait, no, I need a good pickaxe. Need to kill the brain boss again. And this time I'm against the second smartest human of all time. 
the other Matt Damon. Time to go down the elevator. Oh wait, no, I need an obsidian skull to walk on the hellstone. The densest, thickest head ever. Luckily, the guide was keeping one underneath his face, so I took that and now it's time to go down the elevator. I also have a beating heart spurting blood everywhere following me, ready for a heart surgery as soon as I need it. At the bottom of the rope, I find a skeleton salesman who sells me... Lamp oil. Rope. Bombs? You want it? It's yours, my friend. I buy the brand new candle clicker. It emits light, which is helpful, but its greatest power is that the prefix is laggy, so I can always blame it on lag if I die. After exploring the sea of Gordon Ramsay's missing lamb source, I managed to collect one guide voodoo doll. With all the items I needed, I return to the surface, going to put down the lava furnace to make another aesthetic addition to my house. Now that I have hellstone bars, I can finally craft the ultimate the red hot clicker, a mouse of pure fire. To prevent burning, users coat their hands in the coldest substance known to man. Matt Damon. Time to test this out. Since I skipped Queen Bee, I'll go and fight that boss in the jungle. Ugh, why is it taking so long to walk? Oh yeah, I replaced Hermes boots with a cookie. That was smart. I replaced a gift from the gods for a high sugar treat. Is this game changing my priorities? Right now, I'm running through the blood moon with a beating heart chasing me, setting all my surroundings on fire towards destroying the natural creatures of the jungle. Am I? Am I the bad guy? YouTube also keeps recommending me this villain music. Should I feel bad about what I'm doing? Oh god, I need to pay for my sins. Ooh, yum, a cookie! Then I showed a bee on steroids so that he can't spread pollen here anymore. If he wants to help flowers grow, he better move to Poland. Yeah! Okay, I won. What was the point of that again? Oh yeah, to prove that clicking is more effective than artillery cannons. I've been clicking a long time though. My finger's biceps have grown biceps. I need to end the wool of flesh before I get too buff. You generally need a runway for the wall of flesh, so most people use wooden platforms, and since you need thousands of them, they end up deforesting four entire planets. But there's another way. Buy planter boxes from the Dryad. They function the same as platforms, and you can just throw money at the problem instead of actually doing the work. I learned this from the only good Terraria YouTuber. You still need to use platforms to go up and down, but it's so worth it. Alright, I'm at the end of the runway. I haven't upgraded my armor, or got potions, or prepared in any way, but I've been holding onto this voodoo doll way too long and I just have to throw it. The line of lamb is approaching and now I'm starting to wonder how I get close to it with the circle radius and actually deal damage without dying. Alright, in the first phase it isn't too bad. I'm taking a bit of damage but dealing more to it. It's not too bad. Okay, now Hannibal Lecter's wet dream is shooting lasers. Uh, I can't get close to the lasers without dying. Damn it! Wait, the cookie. Of course! Cookie Clicker was the answer all along. By clicking the cookie, my radius is increased just enough for me to deal damage without being directly in laser range. I have to dash in with the cookie buff and then run away until it comes back, dodging all the lasers in the process. Come on, I have to click faster. My finger hurts. I've got the time machine in Cookie Clicker. My finger's biceps have grown two biceps and then another one on top with a flux capacitor in the center and that's powered by Ultra Instinct Goku. Rah! I win. I guess you could say the wall of flesh is now the wall of death. Shh.